What's happening, fish freaks? There you can see I'm getting my 10 gallon tote. I grab a heater and I grab a wave maker. You just want to make sure that you have something to put the fish and the plants in, of course. I get my siphoning tube, everything like that. You want to get all ready. You want to unplug everything. Of course, you don't want to burn out your heater and your pumps or your filter. Uh, I unplug the CO2 as well. And then I like to put the tote just right next to the tank, just on the side of the tank so it's out of your way, but it's right next to the tank. It makes it real easy, as you can see. And then when I'm ripping out the plants and everything like that, makes it no big deal at all. You know, you're not tripping over it or anything like that. Of course, you can see I'm putting the heater in there, the wave maker. Um, and I just try to keep the tote or the container really clean. So I have a secondary rinse bucket that I'll rinse all the plants in just to keep that tote really clean. And you'll see it here in a minute. Of course, I'm putting down some old towels. You want to put some towels down. It can get muddy. It can get wet. Um, right there is my rinse bucket. So I start out by, you know, siphoning some water into the rinse bucket. I start rinsing the plants. And then throughout the process, I'll, you know, empty the rinse bucket and refill it. So it, eventually it'll be filled with tap water. But right there, I'm just showing you, I'm picking some Java moss off. It's probably not the best, best example because it doesn't really have a lot of dirt on its roots, but I'm going to put all the mosses in a separate little container just so they don't get blown around by the wave maker. Um, and then right here, I'm just going to go ahead and rip up some S repens. Um, but you can see I have my water change jug for the wastewater, but then my bucket is uh, the rinse bucket that I'm going to use for a few different things. A um, few different purposes throughout the process, and you'll see. And then the s repens goes into the tote, keeps the tote nice and clean. Right there, you can see that I didn't really salvage the sand. One thing you can do is you can siphon the sand at the very beginning to salvage it. I just went ahead, got ahead of myself, ripped out all the plants. But you can see the totes crystal clear. Um, the rinse bucket works. You get all the dirt, everything. Um, algae to things like that off of the plants um, right there you can see that I've got the filter media at this point the rinse bucket is full of tap water so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this um, in the tank and this just helps to salvage the bacteria beds so they're not just left sitting inside uh, the filter go ahead and put it in the tote you've got the wave maker with some uh, good water agitation and I just work my way down so right here I'm gonna go ahead and scrape some algae off I've removed most of the plants, uh, all the rocks. There you can see the glass is pretty clean. Um, of course, the water is super muddy, so you want to act quick because it will irritate the fish and the shrimp. Um, but I bet you didn't realize I had that many rocks. I forgot there was actually quite a bit of rock in there. Um, right here, I'm just showing you, you know, how I build it up in the back just to get the bottom ready to scoop out all the fish so about at two or three inches I hurry and scoop out all the fish and shrimp rinse them off throw them in the tote um, right here I'm mopping up the water with the sponge using the rinse bucket once again and then of course right here I've emptied the rinse bucket now I'm using it you know just to scoop out the soil and the sand just with the measuring cup I find that the measuring cup works just fine and then what I did is I put the substrate into a box that I lined with the trash bag. Right here I'm just showing that I got my hose ready and I sprayed down the walls and so I had to do the sponge method a couple times, mop up the water a couple times, get all the sand and the soil off of the glass. And then right here at the very end I've cleaned the rinse bucket all out. I have warm clean water. I clean the sponge so I'm just wiping down the sides of the tank uh, with clean water getting it all ready and then at the very end of course I just dry it off with a dish towel and that's basically it guys that's uh, how I do it uh, I've made a lot of mistakes in the past and doing these little techniques and methods has really saved me a lot of time and headache all right everybody here's the finished hardscape of the new scape and I'm so glad I rescape because I love this scape. How many times can I say the word scape? 
I got my inspiration from the lava fields of Iceland. Here's a few photos just to give you an idea of uh, where I'm going with this scape. Um, you know, I don't have tons of resources, but I do have Dragonstone, so I thought, hey, why don't I do something like this? Um, let's just go over, you know, what I'm using. I am not using any soil at all. I'm just using the ADA and La Plata, um, Colorado and La Plata sand uh, made by ADA. I'm using the Dragonstone and then, of course, just some branches of manzanita that are reaching out across the canyon. And as you can see, the shape overall is kind of like a big rock that's been broken up, like a big triangular shape. The top is at the top right, and then it goes down to the bottom left. Um, and as well, you can see that where the canyon is, each side of the canyon complements its each other. It's like a mirror image, you know, if, it, if the canyon goes in, each side goes in. So it's kind of like an hourglass. Um, that's just a method, you know, people use. Um, and then if you go to the middle dome, you can see that the left edge of the middle dome has that right slope that's sloping up and to the right. So, of course, the rocks are leaning in on each other and creating that nice canyon, creating a lot of that depth. And then if you go to the far left side and you look at the left dome, you can see the big rocks at the front of the bottom of that left dome. You can see how their leading right edges are parallel to the left edge of the middle dome. So of course it's complementing the middle dome and what it's doing is it's moving your eye from the left to the middle dome and eventually into the canyon. Now I did use some linear perspective. So of course you can see the big rocks in the front and then I've made the rocks in the back a little bit higher so you can see them as well and I pushed them into the middle a little bit more just so you can see you know the the leading edges of all the rocks from the front to the back and that's just going to create a lot of depth a lot of layering uh, linear perspective um, and then if you you know look at the middle dome it looks like one giant rock but it's because I've pieced everything together like a puzzle I'm trying to make it look like a solid rock instead of a bunch of different rocks but it's probably about 20 different rocks and so it can be hard to do I wish I could have filmed it, but my camera had no batteries and it was also freezing and just, I don't know, the battery died and for some reason it froze up on me. Um, but, you know, it's almost just as beneficial just to talk about it, just to give you guys some ideas. So you want to fit it together like a puzzle piece. Again, on the left side, you can see those rocks slanting up. They're parallel to the middle dome. It's complementing that middle dome. And then, of course, both sides of the canyon lean in on each other. You're creating all this depth. Um, of course, I have some lava rubble around the bottom, scattered around the bottom. Um, all I'm using um, for plants in this scape is I'm going to use Monte Carlo, Ricardia, uh, Fissidens, and Java Moss. And then around the base, I'm going to have a little bit of micro sword, and that's all. I'm just putting the plants on the crest of all the rocks if that makes sense not on the walls so much here and there but mainly I'm I'm outlining the leading edges of all these rocks and I'm outlining the main crests of the rocks on the outside near the light I'm gonna have the Ricardia then down in the canyon and down in the shadows I'm gonna have the Fissidens and the Java moss just to make it darker because those mosses are darker in color than the Ricardia so then that will even add more shadow it'll add a little bit more depth down into the canyon but that's basically it guys let's just go ahead and take a look at the finished project I'll let you go ahead and enjoy that thanks for watching until next time keep your sleeves wet peace out